Hello there. Okay, so today I'm going to discuss chapters 6 and 7 because I really want to try to finish this up by chapter 10. Um, okay, so as you recall, at the end of chapter 5, the family had arrived back in Maine and they had their rental car that Alden had reserved for them. And the next Monday, Chuck was starting his new job at the sardine factory. So when that Monday arrived, Brenda and Katie took Chuck to work and they were off to the thrift store after they dropped him off at work because Katie still had another week before she had to, over another week before she had to start school. Um, so Katie and Brenda dropped Chuck off at the sardine factory and they headed to the thrift store, the Second Life thrift store that Brenda was very excited about. So they arrived there right when they opened, early, and there was nobody else in this, no other customers in the store, just the lady that was working there. So um, they had plenty of room to walk around, look around, and Again, they both uh, went to the clothing section. Brenda went to her section and Katie went to the younger, you know, teenager section. So um, Brenda was very excited because she found lots of things that she really liked in her size. And also she found a lot of things for Chuck as well. Because when they left Ohio, they left very soon, you know, they, it, it was seven days when everything was packed up, but they did not take all of their clothing because it would have been too much. Even though the moving company was doing all the moving for them, they got rid of a lot of things. So it was a good time for them to just get some new stuff. Even though it was secondhand, it was still new to them. Uh, so she was really excited because the price was also really cheap. As I mentioned last week, everything was $1 in the store. Um, so she bought a lot of stuff. She found lots of things for Chuck and for her. And then Katie also did, but I'll tell you about that in a minute. So Brenda, like I said, found lots of things for all of them. But it, she found... A lot of shirts that Chuck could wear to work, like plaid shirts. She found a really nice red one that he would look really good in, she thought. And just all kinds of things, like a couple of weeks worth of stuff for each of them. She was really excited and the price was very cheap. So, it, you know, it made sense. And Katie found a lot of things as well in her size. So for all, all three people, there was a lot of things in their size, which is really unusual because, you know, a lot of times there's just like scattered sizes, but they had a lot of things in their, their size exactly, exactly. So it, it was just amazing. Okay, so, um, when they walked out of there, they had like five of those big, garbage bags full of stuff. So they put it all in the car. Oh, and I forgot to mention that um, Brenda found, um, one of the things she was really excited about is that she found these three matching robes for all three of them. They were all in the same color, but different size. But she thought it was kind of cute, you know, to, to get one in each size, so they'd be like twinsies or something like that, whatever. But you know, I get it, okay, let's move on. Okay, so anyway, so there's like five, they have like five bags in their car. And so they go home and, um, you know, Brenda is gonna have to come back to the laundromat to um, have everything washed, right? To wash everything. But she didn't want to do it that day. And I also forgot to add that she did buy other stuff at the thrift store. I was so focused on the clothes, I forgot to mention that. She bought some other stuff too. She bought a couple of lamps, she bought some dishes and some knickknacks to go on the tables and things. So she bought other stuff too, that's why there was five bags, okay. 
So they get home and, um, you know, Katie's off in her room um, texting her friend and from back home and um, Tammy and uh, Brenda, she didn't wash, want to wash everything right away, but she kind of wanted to just put stuff on hangers just to look at it, you know, so she was doing that. Um, so, okay, so Katie was to start high school the next week. So Brenda thought, well, you know, I, I really do need to get to the laundromat. Maybe Katie could go with me and help me since there's so much stuff. But, okay, so so in a couple, it was a couple days later, they dropped Chuck off at work, but Katie did not want to go to the laundromat. She wanted to go back home and try on some more of her stuff. Even though it hadn't been washed yet, you know, she's 14, she just wanted to hurry and try it on. And she didn't want to be bothered and that's what she was doing. She was trying it all on. And she had done that the night before as well. But she, in the next morning, she didn't want to be bothered with having to go to the laundromat. But Brenda told her, well, you know, you need to gather all your things up. We need to take it all. I need to get it all over there. We have to wash it all. Okay, so, um, you know, Katie put all of her stuff back in the bag. And <clears throat> Brenda went by herself to the laundromat which she really could have, you know, appreciated some help, but Katie wasn't interested. She wanted to stay home and do some things on her phone. Okay, so Brenda gets to the laundromat and um, the clean, clean breeze laundromat and there's nobody else in there. It's morning time. And, um, you know, the washers are placed up against the window and the sun was shining in. It was a really nice day. Fall was approaching. It was just, it was nice the way the sun was coming in. Um, it was quiet in there, nobody else in there. So she knew what her plan was. Once she got all of the clothes in the washer and dryer, was to just sit and read the news on her phone and just do stuff on her phone, email, you know, all that stuff. So she's, she's got all of the five bags, actually no, it was four. The other bag had some of the other household stuff, but so four bags of clothing. She got them all in there because parking was right outside of the window since this is like an isolated town pretty much. Um, so she gets the bags into, into, into the uh, laundromat, sets them all down, and she starts, you know, shaking. She had already cut the tags off because she had them up on the hangers already, but she's shaking everything out, you know, to putting, putting things in the, laun in, the, in the washer. And there was two washers. So she did manage to get uh, all, everything in, in one load in both because they're oversized washers and she had the four bags so she was able to get two bags of clothing into each washer so that's that's good it was one trip so she's shaking everything out and and she sees a red plaid shirt that she picked out for Chuck and she's looking at it thinking you know this is so nice this is a nice shirt He's gonna look really good. It's gonna bring out his green eyes. She thought he's gonna look really nice in this shirt when he goes to work that day. Okay, so she's shaking it out and the sun's coming through the window, right? <clears throat> so as she's shaking it out, she's like, you know, holding it up. And she notices something about the fabric. It's a, it's a like a red flannel plaid shirt. I actually have a red flannel shirt, but Chuck's has like green in it as well. So it had like <clears throat> red, black, green, and some dark blue, all in, you know, all in the plaid. So she's holding it up, admiring it, but there's like a change in color in part of the shirt, <clears throat> like in the top section. I don't know the top section, front or back, but she just notices, she's thinking, is that, what is that? Oh, well, she thought, well, well, it must just be the way the fabric is. You know how sometimes there's like things in the fabric that aren't perfect? 
So she disregarded it and just continued to wash everything. She's shaking stuff out. She takes stuff out of the washer and then, you know, after the washer was done, she took stuff out and she's shaking it out, putting it in the dryer. And that's when she she has the three robes. You know, they all have had the matching three robes, right? In different sizes. She's doing the same thing. She's shaking them out and again, the sun's coming through and these are all like a burgundy, burgundy color. They're really nice, they're real good quality robes and they were soft. It was a good quality fabric, she could tell. Not the cheap stuff that everything in your laundry is gonna stick to when you take it out, even when you use the fabric, the, you know, the fabric softener. No, these were good heavy duty ones. That's why she bought them. But anyways, when she's shaking those out, same thing. By the light, when she's shaking them out, she notices there's like a different shade in the fabric that doesn't look like it would belong there. It wasn't like a stain. It, it, she, it, she, it, it wasn't like a clear stain. It was just like a difference in the color of the fabric. It just looked darker in some sections. She didn't know why. She thought, oh, well, you know, nothing can be perfect, right? And she paid a dollar for them. It was a good price. She just thought, oh, stop being so critical. She just thought she was being overcritical. Okay, so that's that. So she finishes the laundry. Then she goes home. And Katie is still in her room which was slightly unusual for her to be in her room that long because Katie is usually was a little more talkative and social and close to her mom, but she was kind of distant. She had been kind of distant, like for the past few days. Um, then Brenda decides, okay, so Brenda hung everything up that she put gave Katie's to hers and Katie actually hung her own up, but Brenda hung up hers and Chuck's. So, she, you know, everybody hung up their own stuff. Well, Brenda hung up hers and Chuck's cause he was at work. So after that, then Brenda decides it's a good time right now to start putting some of those little knickknacks and decor out that she got at the thrift store at the same time she got all the clothes. So she's putting everything out, you know, she had some bases. She had some like little dishes, just, you know, household junk. And a lamp, a really nice lamp that she really, really liked. It had a fabric shade on it. It was a, a floor lamp. A very nice, like a burgundy color, really nice um, lamp shade. Brenda really likes like maroon colors and burgundy. She, she loves those dark colors. So she picked a place where she thought that the lamp would look really good. In the corner of the living room, right by the window. It would look perfect there, right by the window. And so she puts it over there by the window. And the sun is kind of coming through, just like at the laundromat, it's coming through. She notices something about that lampshade. What is it? She's thinking, why does it, why is there like a different color right there? You know, she's looking at it. She thought, oh, I wonder what happened. Well, it's not that bad, but I, she noticed it wasn't perfect. It was just a difference in a section of the color. It was a solid color, but she just noticed, you know, there's something a little off right here, the color of the burgundy. So she thought, well, I'll just turn it over here. So that part was like, since it was in the inside L in the corner, just aim it where that part's at the wall so nobody will see it. So then she forgot about it. Okay. So the next week, Katie was starting high school. Okay, by that time, all of the clothes, you know, had been washed and hung up and um, Brenda even actually ironed some. And um, <clears throat> she wanted everything to be perfect for Katie's first day at school. So on that next week, 
when they took, they first, of course, they only still had the rental car by that point. They, their car still hadn't arrived in Maine, so they were still one car. So before Brenda dropped uh, Chuck off at work and Katie at school, you know, everybody had on their new stuff from the thrift store because the majority of their clothing now was from that thrift store because that was the newer stuff. So of course they wanted to wear that since they had never worn it before. So Katie had her new stuff on, Brenda had her new stuff on, and Chuck had his new stuff on. Okay, so everybody had their new stuff on and it was a new day. They're gonna drop Chuck off at work. Katie, her first day of school, very exciting, right? Well, <clears throat> they're all in the car, right? So they're gonna drive, dro dro drop Chuck off at work. And Brenda was like, um, all happy-go-lucky, you know, she was in the car, she wanted to put the music on and, you know, she's putting it on to this um, music that she normally doesn't listen to, like a, you know, um, not a hip-hop, but a, you know, just a, I, I can't, you know, like a dance music kind of state, like a, not a hip-hop, but you know what I mean. Like a R and B, um, not necessarily an oldies R and B, but you know, you know what I mean. That that kind of music, it, it, I can't think of it right now. But um, I mean, it's kind that I listen to a lot. But I don't know what it's called because I'm getting too old. I don't remember. But anyways, so she's putting on the music, and Chuck is getting irritated. He's looking at her like, are you crazy? Why, why are you listening to that? It's early in the morning, nobody wants to hear that crap. Turn it off. And he's talking to her like that when he normally doesn't do that. He was just being a major jerk, okay? He was just, you know, he wasn't being happy-go-lucky like Brenda was at this time. He was just, he was being the same way that he was back at the house and at the thrift store. Same way. But Brenda didn't care. She was feeling good. You know, there was some songs on there that she really liked, songs that she heard years ago. I mean, she, she was in a really good mood, okay? In the meantime, Katie is in the back seat and she has her earbuds in. She's not paying attention to any of them. She's like totally disconnected. She didn't even want to go to school. As they got closer to the school, she was having a major, like you could see it in her face, you know? Like, oh no. You know that look? Like, don't say anything. It's, you know, you know, one of those kind of things. A teenager thing. And, but so Brenda just disregarded it and just, but that Katie was in her own, thing, you know, she's, you know what I mean? Okay, so, so Brenda and, and Katie first dropped Chuck off. So he, he, he goes, he, he goes to work, you know, and he, and he wasn't even nice when he got out of the car. Okay, we won't even go there. He just wasn't nice. Okay, so then Brenda, <clears throat> dropped Katie off at school and normally you know Katie would have said you know okay bye mom or something like that no 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 she didn't do that today no she just gets out of the car and just slams the door that's it I mean Brenda told or tried to tell her to have a nice day on your first day Katie already knew what time Brenda was coming back to pick her up but Katie did not even, you know, say anything. She, she just got out and saw, she had a major attitude. Okay, so <clears throat> to make a long story short, um, this went on, okay? So this went on, the, these personalities went on 
for quite a few weeks. I'm, I'm just trying to condense this down, okay? Um, and like I said, this could drag on forever, but I'm trying to condense this down so I could be done by chapter 10. So let's just say this went on for a few weeks. The same kind of situation in a different place, you know, whether it's a house, a store, the same attitudes out of these three. Remember, Brenda is like happy-go-lucky. And actually, I need to mention, Brenda was actually even starting to flirt with strange men, like at the grocery store, the, you know, the little market over there. And she was, just, her whole personality, um, she, and she spent a lot of time on social media, which she never did before. She created like a Facebook account, all these things that she never would have done before. She did that. And while Chuck was a major jerk most of the time, he was coming home late from work every day. He was complaining about everything. He was barking at Brenda and Katie every night at home. He was a major jerk. And then he even said that he was sick and tired of working at the sardine factory and he preferred to work at the bank downtown which he never would have done before. He never would have been interested in working at a bank. This just happened. And Katie, who was always the pleasant girl, who was always connected with her parents, major disconnect, spent most of her time in her room at night on the phone or texting who knows who or just and having a major attitude never saying bye when she got out of the car, when Brenda take her to school, slamming the door. All three of these personalities were different and there was like no explanation for that. And so that happened for weeks. And something also new that started happening is every single night, there has been a strange car driving down their street. You know, their street dead ends, right? Well, it's like a, not, I wouldn't even call it a cul-de-sac or a court because it's in a country road. It just dead ends where their house is. But this car would like, not late at night, but like three in the morning, would go all the way down, you know, with the headlights go down to the end of the dirt where their house is, turn around slowly and drive back. And that had been happening for quite a while. And that's where I have to leave the story and I'll be back to do chapter eight. I did chapter six and seven tonight. I will be doing chapter eight in a few days to continue on. So remember at this point, the three of them, their personalities are completely different. And there's a strange car driving down their street almost every morning at like 3 a.m. with the lights on. So that's where I have to leave it. So I'll be back in a few days to finish up. Well, not to finish up because there's probably about 10 chapters, but I'll be on chapter eight in a few days. I'll see you then. Bye.